had a significant impact on me ever since I first read The Drover's Wife as a very young boy. Subsequently I studied Lawson at university, taught by my friend Brian Matthews, and I've always sort of considered Lawson to be the seminal Australian voice in lots of ways. This is a, a project that I wanted to do for quite some time. When we got into the first division, if you like, of the music industry with I Was Only 19, a lot of writers and reviewers who had been at great pains to ignore Red Gum up to that particular point in time were forced by our popularity and our album sales to go back and have a look at the work that had preceded I Was Only 19. And a couple of them made the observation that if, 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 uh, you know, if, if, if Henry Lawson had a bastard son, it, it might well have been John Schumann. There was always a connection, there was always a fascination, there was always an interest and there was always a belief on my part that Lawson is a very important figure on the Australian literary landscape, on the cultural landscape, but also seminal in understanding, you know, who we are. Originally we, we thought that we might do an album of Henry Lawson and banjo stuff, Henry and banjo, but in discussion with David Muneer, bloke from Adelaide with whom you know, I've been friends for you know, quite some time, Lawson was, and this is not to dismiss banjo's importance on the landscape, but Lawson was a much more interesting figure. What we did, we both had a copy of the same book, John, and we went in different directions and we chose things we thought were quite good. John then went and picked the ones that made more songs, but yeah. there was quite a simpatico between yeah, yeah, was, yeah. what we chose. Yeah. Nobody's ever done them, yeah. you know, yeah. which is great. Well, let's do the next one then. Let's just do it. After David and I decided that, that we were going to work together on this project, um, the, the first person that I went and got was Mick Wordley. John and I talked about doing this Lawson project probably at least five years ago. I had been working on a song called Second Class Wait Here, um, well, on a song on, on putting music to those lyrics, and um, he just lit up because he'd been thinking about the same sorts of things. Whenever I go out and play, Mick comes with me and, and plays, and we've done a few odd projects together, as you would do, but real, realistically, you know, whenever I open my guitar case, Mick opens his. The album is different, and the delivery of it is different, I think, because if there's one person in Australia that could deliver a whole record that people could understand and relate to in the Australian vernacular, I think it's John. I just think that he is the person that people relate to with his delivery and his interpretation and his read of Lawson. I think it's great. Having wrote Mick in, which was always going to be the case, um, we started to think about a producer. It was an unusual one. It just sort of came out of the blue. I, I, I live in Brooklyn in New York, you know, so the... the, the Mention of Henry Lawson uh, brought back a, a flood of things from uh, an earlier time in my life, growing up here. And um, given uh, that I knew Mick very well, Mick Wordley, and I've worked with him a lot, um, the people that they had mentioned, uh, the different performers being involved, Sounded like a really, uh, really great project to do. Rob Hurst. <laughs> hey, Rob. How you doing, Hi, Karen? Present Karen Tolhurst. Yeah, it's been a while, mate. Glad you could make it. Oh, and thank you. Toby Lang. 
Rob. Hey, Rob. Hi, Toby. Hey, nice to meet you. See Paul you Cartwright. Yeah. Rob. Paul. How are you going? Hi. Shannon Bourne. Hey, Rob Hurst. Rob. Hi. How are you? Good, yeah. I do remember when I started writing songs back in the early 70s um, with Greg Quill in Country Radio. Um, we had often talked about, you know, Australian poets were a real, <clears throat> a real influence in the way we thought about writing music back then and lyrics. And we were very conscious of the of the culture that 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 people like Lawson and Patterson had had uh, done in a different generation. So I don't want to be Philly, like I don't want to be too Philly in those. But you can keep the snare fairly loose, you know, like that kind of. Yeah. In those little gaps, so you're kind of filling that, you know, without doing fills. Yeah. It's just a groove sort of thing. To keep doing yeah. that kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, done. Let's go again. Okay. working title of this project has been for quite some time now Demons and Dreams because Lawson was you know full of dreams but plagued by demons and it was the notion of a difficult man a man who faced a series of very significant challenges throughout his life I've been very careful to be respectful of the work you know when I close my eyes and I'm doing the vocal tracks, I'm really thinking of what kind of mood, what kind of tone, what kind of temper suffused Lawson's spirit when he wrote this stuff. And, you know, there's some anger and some frustration and some, you know, outrage and injustice and, and you know, a whole range of things, which in, in some ways have, have marked, you know, some of my work over the years as well. So it was pretty easy to slot into the Lawson groove, if you like, you know having worked closely and deeply, you know, in the text of the songs. David sent me up to Bali for three or four weeks and I set up my four track and my drum machine and headphones and a Shaw microphone and a couple of guitars and worked pretty hard, I've got to say. I ended up writing at least a song a day, sometimes two songs a day, and it was pretty, you know, it was pretty hard. <laughs> Which one do you want to listen to? Second one, I reckon. Uh, I'd like to hear the last one. Yeah. The one Thank you. Yeah. 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 demos I'd done in Bali and we'd sort of fix them up a bit and just play them on acoustic guitar. Sent up a CD to Kieran, he, he looked at it and uh, lo and behold he was down here in early May and you know we sat in an apartment in South Yarra and uh, you know just ploughed through the songs, pulled them apart and put them back together again. It's, it's been terrific, I mean he's, he's, Kieran's contribution has been very very significant and he's just terrific to work with because he's, he's professional, he's uh, his musicality is, is a absolutely consistent with mine. There's not one thing that he suggested to do to these songs that as a songwriter I haven't said, that's fantastic, it takes it to the next stage. David came up with the idea of having guest artists on to sing it's a verse or to sing a song or to you know, be a feature on the album. That was straight wire cross. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, we both looked at musicians that were older than me, you know, the, the, the wave that crashed on the shores of Australian music before Red Gum. She begged for a sign, if only a line, and I wish I could write it now, write it now. Mike Rudd and Spectrum had been a, also a, a seminal influence on me. And he was terrific, we had this great conversation, and Mike was into it like a rat up a drain pipe. When I got the demo that John did, I was a little apprehensive because it's in a, in a completely different style to which I'm accustomed, and, and so many words. Um, so, yeah, very interesting challenge. That's great. I think so. The lighthouse love. Oh, no, that'll be really good. Yeah. It, 
works with the strings really well, you know. Yeah. I know. I know. It's something I never thought of. That's great. Come on in and have a listen. That ending. Great ending. All those fits are beautiful. Yeah, we get all the way. Yeah. I mean, I've got to tell you, I, I want to have a serious talk. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. Not <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. Well, I was thinking about it's going to be Big Rudd and the, Mike Rudd and the Vagabond crew. Right. John Hughes, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mate, it's fantastic. Right. Yeah. You'd be pretty happy with that. It's great. Yeah. Would I? Right. Yeah. 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 In suburban railway stations. It was terrific to uh, sing with Shane and Marcy Howard from the Goanna Band. I've been a, a big fan of those guys for a long time. And the other uh, special moment for me was when Stephen Allen Pigram from the Pigram Brothers came down from Broome to sing on the album. I mean, for me, for all of us, it was a very important part of the album to have those voices in the blend because they're a very important part of the landscape. I've always been a fan of Broderick Smith from the Dingoes as a singer and an interpreter of songs and also as a harp player. I got a call from John and John came down to Castlemaine where I live and sat on my back porch and we discussed Henry Lawson and that period for a while. And I think of all the conversations that I had with the artists who are on the album, the one that was probably the most academic and the most um, the toughest was the one with Brod. So enough out of the two? <coughs> Plenty. OK. I was never actually that much into Henry Lawson, but from a social and political point of view, that's when I was interested. I related in that area. And thank you yeah. so much for this. No worries, Dave. Unbelievable, you know? It's a magic on top of magic, so it's really, really... Double really magic. Yeah. I'm memon slaves and your knees shall knock and your hearts in terror beat. When your God demands the reason for the sorrows of the street. There was one song on the album, Faces in the Street, which I wrote essentially with Robbie in mind. It's just a two chord song. It's a very really simple melody, but it would take somebody like Robbie Hurst to just open it up. Mate, I'll tell you what, Black folk. a little more of this than we could do all 91 verses of Spencer the Wild Rover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a plane to catch. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to do it to a click. We don't have to. Maybe we should try it clickless and if we all fall apart then. No click. Mm. Okay, no here click. we go. Ah. Whenever you're ready. A one, two, three. He just came down and nailed it in one take. It was just stunning. Absolutely stunning. The whole, you know, the whole production team and all the musicians just went. Just extraordinary. Paid by them to tell us reasons of their own. Want is here a stranger. Unknown where the nearest suburb and the city proper meet my wing. Mate, that's a two big thumbs up, you know. 1920s poetry never sounded so good. Ah, that's great. <laughs> that's unbelievable. Um, that's gonna work for me. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. That's a small map. Jesus. No, that's, that's great. We'll, we'll sort out the ending. You're gonna do two for. Price of one. Two, price of one. 
just for mix sake or well with that with that one there yeah that's, that's it I mean I, I, I don't you mean he flew down all the way here <laughs> for one fucking take <laughs> I reckon it was worth the money what is this shit vagabond crew does for himself what a mother would do maybe in trouble maybe hard up maybe in spider well hang on this might be a good way to do it though what just Without. leaving out those little incidental words in between. Okay. Because, you know, well, you're producing could, could be really problem. effective like that. I, I'd like to hear it like the way you do oh, it. Oh, yeah, it gets harder the other way. Knocking <laughs> 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 around with a vagabond crew Does for himself what a mother would do Baby in trouble Maybe hard up For the first time since 1986 when I left Redgum, Michael Atkinson and, and Hugh McDonald and I sang together. And that was very emotional, but it was a terrific moment. It's actually easy because um, although 20 years has passed really since we all sang together, we just, we just sort of slip into it. It's like sliding into a warm bath, boom, just back. Knocking about, runs of the west, holding his arm, the worst than the best. Bringing in horses, risking his neck, driving and shearing, making the checks. Straight as a sapling, six foot of sound. Jack is all right, he's knocking around. We'll get that one again. We've got some great players. Louise McCarthy, and she's written and played some lovely violin lines. Keep your patronage for others. Golden Station cannot hide. Russell Morris. I thought Russell's voice would add a particular dimension to the vocal blend. John uh, actually rang me up and he told me it was the, the Henry Lawson and he said, what do you know about him? And I said, well, like most Australians, unfortunately, don't know as much as I should. And he gave me some of the lyrics to some of his stuff and I just thought, this is just fantastic, you know, unbelievable. Keep your patronage for others, golden station cannot hide. Friendship that can laugh at fortune, friendship that can conquer pride. Opposites to an equal. Let me see that you are true. Yeah, I'm going to come in for a minute. I need to get with John. All right, I'm in trouble. No, you are in big trouble. It's this guy here. It's this guy. <laughs> no, um, so rather than leaving in, the big gaps in between, yeah, like, so you lean into the friendship. Yeah, like, yeah. hit that, like, more right on the beat so you've got more space for it to, you know. Yeah, so let John do another one. Yeah, and you okay. can so guide him like, through it, and then we'll... So how's here. the first line? So keep your patronage for others. Golden Station cannot hide. You know? Except that yeah. you've got, you know, it's a poem and you're dealing oh, yeah, with it. No, it's a song now. No, no. <laughs> you're dealing with it, uh, the punctuation and that is oh, a discreet no, observation. No, rubbish. <laughs> Absolute rubbish. I'll let you guys fight this one out. Okay, well. It's, it's now a song. Yeah, well, uh, look, I'll see how I go. It sound good as a song. It's people. The English teacher in me rebels at this. Yeah, much better. Keep your patronage for others, golden. That's station. that's great. That's it. Yeah. If I was teaching you English, Karen Colhurst, you would be in penal, son. Let me tell you. That's why I left school. <laughs> okay. Just one more shot, and I'll leave you in for that last line as well. Karen and I were brilliantly together. I, I, I've loved every moment of it. There have been some moments, you know, from time to time when we've we've arced up a bit, um, but I would expect that. I, I would have been disappointed if that didn't happen, but I would work with Karen again in an absolute heartbeat. I think he's sensational. My old pride is shattered. These vocal tracks are like my, my dad's new, my dad's old fishing knife. Five new blades and three new handles, and they were as good as the day I bought them. Okay, over to you, son. You've got the right. pattern. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Keep your patronage for others. Golden station cannot hide. Friendship that can laugh at fortune. Friendship that can conquer pride. Offer this as to an equal. Let me see that you are true. My wall of pride is shattered I'm not so proud as you
confident that if Henry was around, if I could go to him and say, Mr Lawson, I've written these songs to your poems, I hope you like them, I hope you approve, I hope I have your blessing, I am supremely confident that he would say yes and then possibly ask me for a drink. <laughs> Three bushmen one morning rode up to an inn One of them called out for drinks with a grin They'd only returned from a trip to the north And eager to greet them, the landlord came forth And he absently poured out a glass of three star And he set down that drink with the rest on the bar that one's for Harry, he said, and it's queer. Tis the very same glass that he drank from last year. His name's on the glass, you can read it like print. He scratched it himself with an old piece of flint. I remember his drink, it was always three star. And the landlord looked out through the door of the bar. at the horses and counted but three you were always together where's harry cried he oh sadly they looked at that glass and they said you may put it away for our old mate is dead but one gazing out all the ridges afar said we owe him a shout leave his glass on the bar they thought of the faraway grave on the plain They thought of the comrade who came not again And they lifted their glasses and sadly they said We drink to the name of our mate who is dead And the sunlight streamed in and a light like a star Seemed to glow in the depth of the glass on the bar Still in that shanty, a tumbler is seen it Stands by the clock, ever polished and clean And often the strangers will read as they pass Name of a bushman engraved on the glass And though on the shelf but a dozen there are That glass never stands with the rest on the bar and, and the sunlight streamed in and a light like a star Seems to glow in the depth, the glass on the bar 